Hey everybody, it's Blue Totem. Welcome back to Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Last time, we're looking at some stone tablets, and I didn't really do a very good job of actually going through them, so I'm actually gonna try and spend a little bit more time, this time, trying to figure out the meaning behind it all. So, how about I figure out where to go, and then we're gonna go from there. So there's lots of tablets that we need to look at, which may take a while to actually go to them all. We can also still travel to Divine Beast Var Ruta, so we can use that as a way to get to places somewhat quickly. But if you get too close to uh, Varuta, it will send you, it will push you away back to, I think, over here. So yeah, you can't get too close to it and all that, so. But anyway, we're up here now, so. Now I need to figure out where everything is. So, let's go down this way. Oh, and there's one down there. On oh, there's the thing there. So many things we can do right now. But anyway, I think this is Luto's crossing. Hang on, just give me a second. I'm getting a little bit s s slowed down, I guess, or something. So, it says... I'm using a guide, by the way, to figure out where all of these are. Because I know, I know the answer to all of this, but I wanted to actually have a look at them in order and all that. That sound makes me think it's a blood moon every single time. So, it says between... Iron Bridge and Luto's Crossing. Directly on the path though. So I, I don't... So is it this one over here or am I crazy? Let's find out. That's part two, okay. So I think we already went over part one and two then, probably. How am I going to stop? Mashing buttons on this does not work at all. So, hey, hang on. Let me see. Origin ore. Okay, so, yeah, I think we have done one and two, because I think one is down here somewhere, maybe? Or pro possibly further up. Probably further up. Are the boulders gone? It seems like they are because they're not rolling down. It could just be because I went from above, but I think it actually might be because there's no Lizalfos here anymore. Possibly until the next Blood Moon, that is. Okay, there's a few things around here. But that's the tablet over there. We definitely read that, so. I also wanted to get a different picture of... Oh, Sneaky River Snail looks... Why does it look different? Okay. Anyway, let's take a picture of that because it looks cool when it's glowing. Maybe I just haven't taken a picture of those yet. I don't know. But yes, we've done one and two then. So let me figure out where I, where I went wrong, basically. I'm pretty sure one and two are also... have all the text there, so... Okay, so, I think that one is number three. It's a shame I didn't really plan this out as well as I should have, because I didn't realize that before I'd done one and two. Okay, this seems like a good spot to jump from. Well, so while I'm up here, can I see... Not really from up here. That's fine. And there it is. But anyway. Let's go over this way. Or is it that thing there? Hang on. That's a tablet thing there.
Oh, and that's a Korok down here. Which I don't think I've ever seen before. Oh, there it goes. Let me just hang it up here for it. Examine. There we go. Let me just mark that off my list. This is what happens when you just glide to places from above. You just find things that you don't know about. Okay, stop crouching, actually climb the cliff. That sound effect really makes me think it's a blood moon, but it's not. It's really not. Am I just used to playing this game with the sound off and I just don't realize that that's just a normal thing to happen? Maybe. Anyway, now that we're up here, let's have a look at this. Because I'm pretty sure this is on the direct path. So let me see what number this is, because I need to know what number it is. Maybe I just didn't read it before. A Demden Dendum 1. So no, that's actually just a different one, I think. Because it's not History of the Zora, it's a Dendum. Oh, no. Ah, I wish I could skip and not just have to read the full thing. Button meshing on these dart does not work because it just goes faster than you realize and then it's doing it again. So anyway, let's go down here. And this one is one we've already looked at, but it was definitely withered away by time. Very worn out. Is that a Korok? I'm gonna bet that's a Korok. How much do I- No, it's actually just 50 rupee! Okay, that's not what I was expecting. But I got my money- money- money back, so I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, let's have a look at this one. And this one should be- No, that's part 7. Okay then, so... How about this? Let's mark this as stamp- one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that makes sense. So that one, because that's on the west side of the lake, like the guide is telling me. I should list, just listen to the guide. The guide knows. The guide understands. Although we already read that, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Okay, so we've, we've done... Oh my goodness, okay. Here, let me mark... That one there as one. This is going to get very confusing. And that one there as two. I think it's actually there, but that's fine. So that one's three. So where is four? South of Luto's Crossing. Okay. So I have to go back again. Wonderful. Just what I've always wanted. Guessing it's somewhere down lowish. It's like there or something, I suppose, maybe. I, but I don't know. That's also where the Divine Beast Varuta is, so I could just go to Varuta again and then keep on climbing. Does feel like it's up there, so I'm gonna warp again. Okay, so... Near the base of Ruto Mountain. You can glide to it easily from Ruto's crossing bridge. So I can go down to the bridge. And then go from there. Is that a shrine that I've already marked? I'm... Probably is. But let me go check to make sure. Maybe not. Okay then. So there's a lot of shrines up there that I know about. There's one down here somewhere. So, I think if I go down to Luto's bridge, I can probably see it from there. Oh, is that it? That's probably it there. Hello. And goodbye. 
Lots of interesting sparkling spots over here. Because of this. Swift Violet. Uh, this vital vitally rich flower blooms mainly on cliff sides. When cooked into a dish, the nourishing compounds increase your movement speed. Okay. Well then let's take a picture of that as well. Oh, I've already taken a picture of it. Actually, I think I've probably read that in a shop and then just didn't realize it and stuff, so. Oh, hello, bright-eyed crab. Let's have a look at this. History of the Zora Part 4, The Light Scale Trident, as told by King Dorfin. The Queen and I were blessed with a daughter, as lovely as a jewel, we named our princess Mipha. To celebrate her birth, the smithy Dento presented Mipha with a gift, a mighty spear called the Light Scale Trident. Mipha grew into a bright girl and soon reached the age of receiving lessons from the royal family's uh, Order of Knights. The whole of the royal guard adore, adored her, especially uh, Sergeant Segan, who loved her as if she were his own kin. Under Segan's instruction, Mipha honed her skills and her radiance grew along with her skill with the light scale trident. As a champion, Mipha made her people proud. However, once the great calamity struck, she was never to return. All of Zora's domain fell into misery. The merest thought of the princess was even enough to over overcome anyone with tears. As a way of offering her soul uh, repose, they tried to send the light scale trident drifting down the Zora River. But when they did, the trident began to glow, and Mipha's voice rang loud and clear for all Zora to hear. The light scale trident and I are one. About... Abandon your grief and no joy once again. Do not cry. Just remember. And so, keeping to her request, on the day of the cl Great Calamity, the day that Mipha passed from this world, the Zora uh, venerates the Light Scale Trident and remember their, their brave princess. Such is the origin of the Champion Festival. So that's how the Champion Festival started. Interesting. Well, let's mark this as... I think we're up to... This is four, right? Yeah, this is four. Okay, so we're, we're getting through it fairly quickly now. We've already had a look at half, so... And the next one is at the base of the cliff at the eastern end of Sub... Sub... Zodobon Highlands, so... I think it's like over... here-ish. So let me put, 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 put a marker here, and I'm probably going to go over to this shrine over here to get up there. Okay, let's figure this out. I see anything from over here? It says at the base of the cliff though. Which is concerning, because it means that it could be on this level. But I think it's actually up higher, so I'm going to go up higher. I'm going to hire a horse by standing on four bricks. Or standing it on four bricks. Okay, let's go up please, thank you. Nothing to see yet. Let's just go this way and see what we can find. Also, it's possible that there's going to be some Koroks up here that I'm going to have to find at some point. I want the cookie. I really want that cookie. Let's see. Can I see what I need to see from up here? Oh, there it is. Probably. I hope so. Let's just glide down to there, I think. And then hopefully this is actually part five and not part six. Which I think is the one at the main, probably. Maybe? I can't remember. How many parts are there? Help. Send help. Okay, let's go down. Let's have a look. 
Memoir of a Gifted Stonemason. It's it's not, okay. Uh, but it is interesting, so... What an honour it was to receive a personal request from King Dorfin to craft his, a s historical stone monument. I did not realise how much context he'd give me, though. It certainly exceeded the line limits of a single monument. I suppose I could have just shortened the text, but it felt wrong to tamper with a great king's words. Thankfully, I was able to split it all between seven monuments to ensure that every word was preserved. I have always prided myself on the, my ability to think outside the box. I am so very adaptable and humble as well. Yeah, I'm very humble. Just in case you didn't know, I'm the most humble person I know. While I was at it, I thought, why not add two of my own? And so I crafted one for King Dorfin and one for Prince Sidon. True, this is outside the scope of my commission, but I believe their triumphs deserve as much. But why stop at that? Why indeed, my achievement surely uh, deserves remembrance too. That is how a commission of one became ten. Of course, having increased the number of monuments, I had to find places for all of them that proved difficult. Still, it is worth it. So, long as I remember to sign these monuments, my name will be remembered forever, as it should be. Cool. Well, this is kind of exactly where I thought that was going to be. But also... Let me actually look at the names of the things, because it's definitely not here. So no bo Z Z Zodon Bo Highlands is over here, so I'm very wrong. I don't know why I, I managed to get to this one before the other one, so... But I've still found this one, and it's interesting that it mentions one for King Dorfin and one for Prince Sardin, so I... I kind of want to look around for those, because I don't think I've read those before, but I don't know how long I want to actually spend doing that, but... I'm just going to spend as much time as I need on these ones, the main ones now, the seven. Okay, here we are. Now, let's figure out where it is. It says at the eastern end, of the at the base of the cliff, so... It's probably fairly on the path. So this is the so no, Zodonbon Highlands. So somewhere over here, I think. Just need to figure it out by going slowly down. Very slowly. Oh, there it is. Right there. Let's go all the way down. Just like that. No fall damage because I pressed the button just before I hit the ground at full speed. History of the Zora Part 5. The Sage Princess Ruto, as told by King Dorfin. Long, long ago, in a time in a past more distant than even the Great Calamity or the creation of the Divine Beast Faruta, there was a Zora Princess named Ruto. We know that she was an attendant to the Zora uh, patron deity and that she was a fair and lively girl, beloved to all. Around that same time, an evil man with designs of on ruling the world appeared bringing disaster upon Zora's domain. It is said that uh, Ruto uh, then awoke as a sage facing this foe alongside the princess of Hyrule and the hero of legend. Her achievements are remembered not only by the Zora, they are also forever etched in history in the history of Hyrule. The divine beast Faruta, built ages later to face off against Calamity Ganon, was named in honor of Ruto. That the Zora princess, my sweet daughter Mipha, was chosen to pilot Ruto is surely the work of fate. So I'm guessing that that means that this is a reference to Ocarina of Time. And Princess Ruto from all of that. That's actually really cool. I don't. I think I've. I'm pretty sure I've read all of these before. But that's really cool. 
I just, it's just been too long, that is just really cool. Okay. So, this next one says it's at the base of the cliff at the eastern end of Zodabon Hut. No, that's the one we just did. The below the overhanging west, uh, overhanging west of, uh, Rutala Dam. So, Rutala Dam is over here. So it's like somewhere over here-ish. Let me warp up here and take a look at that. We could also have pro-read all of these uh, as we went along the path to Zora's Domain, but I don't feel like it would have been that worth it to do that, so I think it's fine doing it now. Hello, Divine Beast Farruta. Don't want to get too close because otherwise it's going to move me. And it's going to be annoying. Oh, there's a rock here. Is that a Korok or is that just a rock? It's just a rock. I was expecting it to be just a rock. But you never know, so... Oh my goodness. Let's mark... Um... Let's mark this... Shrine. And then we'll probably take a look at that. That's no oh, wow, I'm way off where I thought the shrine was. This is actually a fairly good spot for it actually, so I'm gonna mark that as that for now. I will get there. But not at the moment. So anyway. Let's figure out where this other thing is. Somewhere down here. Oh, there's a boulder there. I'm gonna blow that up. Because I feel like that's gonna be secrets. Probably just regular rewards, but you never know until you know. It's just a chest, I care. Still, a silver rupee is pretty good, so. We can follow this path to see where it leads and see if we can find anything else around the place. Some stuff down there. And this feels slightly off the path, so... so... Somewhere around here... But where... And why... And how... Which end does it say? Oh, on the west, so we're on the right side. We just need to figure out... Where exactly it is. There's a fox down there. Probably, it's probably just a little bit further this way. Oh, if I follow that path, of course. Just need to go up here and follow the path. It's just, you know, just normal things. Don't need to be going too paranoid about it. That's how you wording, Squidly. It's over here, right? Please. <laughs> Please? Yes. There it is. Let's go have a look at it. Oh, and there's a mushroom. Mushrooms. Very nice. I like mushroom. Not really, though. Okay, let's have a look at this. History of the Zora Part 6. Divine Beast Varuta, as told by King Dorfin. When the Divine Beast Varuta was first discovered at Zora's Domain, my daughter Mifa hurried to see it. Those present that day say they were they saw an unusual sparkle of excitement in Mipha's normally calm eyes as she behold, beheld Ruta. The princess spoke of div the divine beasts as she would a friend and was overjoyed when she was chosen to part uh, Ruta. I thought nothing of it at the time, but given the events that followed, I now regret allowing this to happen. I have spent many long years consumed by a guilt. My dearest wish is that her soul will know peace. I pray for it every day. So there we go. It's number six. We know where number seven is because we've already marked it down. And that's all seven of them, so. Well, why is there a marker here? I think I just put that there because I wanted to go there at some point at the far end of the lake because it's just area over here. 
think I'll go there at some point, but I don't know when. But for now, let's actually have a look at number seven and actually read it properly. And fully. Okay. I was hoping that this walkthrough thing would actually tell me what the letters are that I'm missing, but apparently not. I wish I still had my original notes from when I did this my first time. Okay. Let's try this again. History of the Zora Part 7. The hero who defeated the Lionel as told by King Dorfin. There was a time when the people of the, the land were threatened by the something beast, Lionel, who lived on Polymus Mountain. But the but one Hylian drove the beast back and uh, restored peace to the domain. The Zora Helm was in the uh, was uh, Helm won in this fight is now north of something. Uh, in, in the, uh, ruins, ruins, near something lake, it, uh, rests, rests there to, uh, uh, honor the, uh, I don't even know. The deeds of the hero. I don't know. Oh, Link. Hero Link. So. Let's have a look at our... Our map. And... There's only a few places... Where there are places called Lake. There are... Lulu Lake. And Toto Lake. We've already been to Lulu Lake, I think, or we saw it. Yeah, that's that's where we've already been there. And there were no ruins there. But there is Toto Lake still. So let's go there. And I feel like I didn't read... I think I read as much as I could of the first tablet. I'm pretty sure... I don't know how much of it I got through, though. Like, the tablet that's in... Zora's Domain. No, I guess I didn't. Maybe, I don't know. I just wish it wasn't as complicated as it is, so I could actually get through it all. So, based on what we've learned so far, the Zora Helm, which is what we're looking for, should be at the ruins in Lulu Lake. Or Toto Lake, that one. But also, I'm going to quickly talk to the person who was wanting to know about all of the tablets. Because I feel like I should report back about that. Since I've now looked at all of them, I think. Have I done it? Link, eh? What is wrong? Are you unable to find all of those stone monuments? I can perhaps tell you of the location of a stone monument. You have yet to invest- of course you can tell me. Tell me. I won't need to roll the dice of hearts for this one. The remaining one is here. Near Lulu Lake. Would you like me to check- uh, Would you like me to check again? Uh, yes please. I'm gonna need to roll the dice for this one. The remaining one is here. Lulu, near Lulu Lake. So that one's probably one of the ten that I'd probably need to look at, so... I'm actually gonna place a marker there. Did I just... No, it didn't. Okay. I thought it was gonna turn me towards it, which was strange for a second. But let's go have a look at that. I suppose, since I have time. 
I just want to get these all done now. I still need to go to Toto Lake. But I'm going to have a look at the one at Lulu Lake. Where, where, where is it? It's still upstream. Is with the, uh, the the waterfall, isn't it? Okay then. Let's just go up here, please, and up we go. It's a long way up. Surprisingly, it says it's near Lulu Lake, but I don't know. How near it means. So hopefully it's just like straightforward from where the camera is and pointing now. It is. Wow. Good. Great. Let's go to it. This is the last one of the ten, not the seven. The seven are part of the ten though, so it makes it easier. Oh, and there's a thing there. Oh, there's two things here. I've taken pictures of these, right? Yeah, big hide radishes. Let's grab these for some more infinite food and infinite full heals. Okay, let's have a look. History of the Zora Adamden 2, Prince Sidon's Great Escape. There was one once a giant octorok in Hateno Bay, large as a mountain, which terrorized the village's fishes. Hearing of their distress, Prince Sidon went forth to personally eliminate the offering offending octorok. But this Octorok was a tricky beast. After the prince dodged one of the giant of the stones it spat, it inhaled him whole. Such had been the fate of many strong warriors who, who went to slay the Octorok. Not one had come back alive. Just as it seemed Prince Sidon would be counting, counted among them, the giant Octorok twisted in pain. The tip, tip of the silver scale spear pierced the Octorok's stomach from within, revealing itself as the source of the beast's agony. Incredibly, Prince Sidon had fought his way out by stabbing his spear over and over into the monster's stomach. Unable to be bear the pain, the Octorok coughed up the prince and scrambled to escape. Ever since, the fishes of Hateno Bay have passed down this, the, this heroic tale. The prince who slew the and fell the fell Octorok. So that's all the Zora Stone monuments down. Let's head back down to Zora's domain. And then we'll actually go see if we can find the Zora Helm in the Toto Ruins. In the lake, whatever it is. We are. Link, it would seem you have checked all of the, the stone monuments for me. Now then, please tell me what was written on them. Hmm, the history, culture, folklore, and various heroic acts of the proud Zora people, it's all here. Eureka, thanks to you, I have comp uh, compiled the precious information from those stone monuments. Link, thank you for taking on such an arduous task. Please, allow me to reward you. Get a diamond. And there we go. That's the stone monuments taken care of. Except we still haven't got all of it done because we still have to go to Toto Lake. Luckily, there's a direct path right over here we can use, so... Let's go do that. There's also that path thing, platform area there that we could have used to make this go by better. Although I think I'm going to run out of stamina anyway, so let's go over there so I don't die. And then figure it out. Let me actually see what's over here while I'm here. Is there anything important? Anything, anything at all? Or is this just a little platform to stand on, basically? That's just how lots of things are in the real world, though. 
if you think about it, just the world's not designed to just go places. It's just how it is, you know. I'm. You don't need to make sense of everything, as if it were gonna give you rewards. Oh my goodness, this waterfall is a way away as well. Let's just dash to make sure I get there. It's a good thing I've got my armor on because it this the Zora armor because it helps me swim faster in the water. But anyway, we've almost made it up. Thank goodness this doesn't use stamina going up a waterfall. For some reason. Anyway, here we are. The ruins at Toto Lake. And now... Let's have a look at them. As you can see, all of the ruins here are submerged in the water. So getting an item out of it is not going to be that simple. Or is it? We go fairly far into here. And then get out Magnesis. We can actually see there's a chest under the water there. So let's bring that out. Just like that. And let's open it. The Zora Helm. Zora headgear made from dragon scales increases swimming speed and allows you to spin to attack underwater. So now we have the complete Zora outfit. The, all, all the Zora armor. And if I go into this water now, I can press A, no Y, to attack as a dash. So, Octorox are going to be in trouble if they come across me. But yeah, yeah, there we go. That's all of that now, done now. And now, I think we're actually able to move on from everything that's here. We might actually go explore some of the places we've got marked on our map, so. But anyway, that is it for this episode of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.